All right. Obviously, Buffalo, a uh, very competitive game start to finish. Um, positives definitely were, again, increased physicality um, really on both sides of the ball. At times offensively, at times not offensively, but there was times offensively played more physical up front, which is huge for us. Defensively, we continue to play more and more physical uh, in the run game. They really, besides a few miscues by us, they really could not run the ball on us. Uh, we had more aggressive play by more people, Paul Moses and Bucci Okafor, two in particular that really, really stepped up and, and played with more confidence and, and, and more aggressiveness. And really, Bucci had a fantastic game. And he's, he's been struggling. He's a smart kid. He's a talented kid. But he's a kid we've been one of the kids we've been talking about of. I know it's in there. we got to figure out how to get it out of him. And I see it in practice, but I don't necessarily see it on Saturday. It just has to do with you know, inexperience, a first-year starter, and tentative, and Saturday he cut it loose and really, really made some huge plays for us throughout the game. Um, better in the pass game, I know that the, the big one we gave up, we panicked a little bit with the ball in the air, which can't do. Either if you're going to panic, tackle him and have it be a 15-yard play, don't panic and then not tackle him or wait and try to play the ball and if not, get him on the ground. So that, w that was disappointing. Obviously, the big turnover for score by Bryson. We got pressure, forced a bad throw. Bryson makes a good play and, and returns it all the way. is a huge play. Uh, we got stops throughout the game, uh, unfortunately, on, <laughs> on two, two touchdown drives. We actually got stops and forced field goals, and they actually missed the one field goal. So um, harping on the intent of our team, the intent keeps moving forward. It's not, not there. We still have a number of kids that their intent isn't good enough on game day, but we, we, we are moving forward in that direction. We're moving forward in aggressiveness. There was, there was tons of evidence, even from certainly from three weeks ago, there was more evidence at Western. There's tons more evidence at Buff, against Buffalo. Um, but the other piece we talk about is the mental toughness and the mental discipline that every play could be the game changer. You don't know when you're going to get the Bryson Burst pick six. You don't know when you're going to give up the 80-yard play. You, those, you step on the field, you just don't know. It could be on kickoff. Could, and, and that's the lessons that we're still learning as a football team. When you have two penalties on fourth down, those, those cost you the game. Those weren't in the only reason we don't win. But those specific plays, when you line up on fourth down, do you have the edge to know that, hey, if I don't make it, the play that I'm supposed to make or make the decision I'm supposed to make here, it could potentially cost you the game. And those are obvious, glaring examples. We had missed route early on offense that cost us a possession. We had a stupid personal foul on offense where we didn't really even hit the kid, but we, it was after the whistle. It was We basically bumped into a kid, and they threw a flag for 15 yards. But again, it was should have been a first down on a nice completion, and now we're second and 15. And those are the things that good teams don't do and teams that don't win do do and we still have too many have we limited the mistakes yeah there's less mistakes but there's not enough limiting in the mistakes that that put you in position to get the victory and there's there's critical plays in that game that you take your foot off the gas for five seconds and that play oh, oh first down they just missed a field goal we're off the field it's a great stop it's a momentum builder it's a, another stop for our defense and all of a sudden they got first and goal on the four and it's seven points and you lose 29 24 and you don't have to look further than those individual plays. And when you're trying to be more competitive, when you're trying to find ways to win games, it's those individual plays for us. We're not good enough to have two or three of those big time mistakes. And then we overwhelm people with our ability at this point in time. Uh, I think we'll get to that point where we can handle some more mistakes, but we're not at that point yet. So um, tons of positives, but the lessons to learn of the mental toughness to do it right every snap. And when you don't, it could be a play that really impacts the game greatly. You don't know. You might make a mistake, and it doesn't hurt us at all, but you might make a mistake that directly relates to 11 more points, and when you lose 29-24, you know, and you're in a situation, we, we had a chance to kick a field goal one time, and if the score is different, you might go for the field goal. Well, we were down two scores. We had to go for seven points. It, it changes the whole complexion of a lot of other decisions in the game uh, when, you're, when you're behind two scores in the fourth quarter. You know, So I thought our kicking game was good again. I thought our kickers did not kick as well as they can kick. They've been doing well. I didn't think we punted or kicked near as well as we've been recently. So those, and again, a missed field goal was critical in, in really – dictating future decisions in the game. So if we made the first field, we'd probably try another field goal. We'd probably been within eight points. When we drove down and score, we'd have a chance for a two-point play to tie the game. 
but it was cutting it to 29 to 24. So I didn't think we kicked as well, but I thought our coverage teams continued to improve. And again, you see more aggressive play by more players. And then our return teams were starting to block some people. And obviously, Maurice has been a nice weapon for us on KOR. Moving forward to Eastern, uh, they're playing really good on offense. You know, they went up and down the field on Western Michigan, who we had a very difficult time moving the ball. They had almost 500 yards of offense. They ran the ball. They threw the ball. They got two quality tailbacks. They got two quality quarterbacks that can run and throw. Um, they're doing more unbalanced. They're doing more jet sweeps. They're doing more power reads as they move forward and uh, been very successful uh, doing that. They're going up tempo, which is helping them on offense. Um, it's hurting them, I think, on defense. It's putting their defense in a lot of possessions during the game. So I think they're piling up yardage and points, but their strength hasn't been their defense up to this point in the year, and they're putting their defense in a lot of possessions too. So they're playing higher scoring games, um, but but obviously the strength so far has been their offense and the ability to move, move the chains, and they've been getting 20-plus first downs, some 25 first downs, 26 first downs. So... Uh, really probably haven't even scored as much as they're capable of scoring based on the yardage and, and the first downs that they've been getting. So um, got our hands, hand, or, you know, work it out for us. We definitely got to do a good job in their run game because that's what they've been in everything, and their pass game feeds off their run game, and, and like a lot of teams in this league. And uh, we, we got to continue to play well against a run and, and, and do a good job there and find ways to get stops and then Offensively, we got to find a ways to score some points, obviously, because they've been giving up some points. It, on one hand, and, and I understand what you're saying about, you know, you, you need to be more aggressive, you need to be more aggressive, but then you see aggressiveness cost you the game. I, I, how do you sell yeah. that mix yeah. to, no, to, no, right, to no, your well, players? That's, that's, that's the fine line. I mean, you, running in the kicker, you just got to take a better angle. You can be just as aggressive, take a better angle, don't run the kicker. To me, that's an easy, easy solvable problem. You got a true freshman trying to make a play. He didn't take a horrible angle and smoke the kicker like you see sometimes, but he took a bad enough angle that with the kicker's foul through, there was contact and obviously it cost us, cost us dearly. But that, that you can correct pretty easily, like just improve your angle as you bend and then make a decision. If you get knocked off, sometimes you're trying to bend and you get blocked a little bit and you get knocked off course and you got to pull off. I mean, you can't. It's the difference between aggressive and, and reckless, and that, obviously that comes into the reckless part of it. Uh, you know, the next one is just is what it is. Like I got called roughing the holder. We weren't trying to rough the holder. Was there contact? Or roughing the center, was there contact? Yeah. That's, I, I don't. Coach for 24 years, seen it called once. Probably, probably be called again, but uh, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't even know what to tell our kids on that one. To be honest with you. So, what's your main area of concern in these last three weeks? Well, biggest thing is by far number one is keep improving, keep improving, keep improving. I felt like. Our, our, our offense is starting to get their feet underneath them a little bit. They're still, I don't think they're going to play great offense the last three weeks, but I think they're starting to grow a little bit and, 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 and do some things at different times and, you know, carve out more resistance. Their defensively, I feel like we're really coming. I keep, I've been telling for weeks it hasn't shown on the field at all at, at different times and sometimes not at all, but I see what they're doing. I see how smart they're becoming. I keep telling them you're becoming a very smart defense. You know what you're doing now. And you're becoming a defense that can really get stops. And now we got to do it on game day. And we're starting to do it on game day, particularly the last two weeks. And then improve pass defense. Obviously, I think we were more competitive. We picked off one for six. We dropped two other interceptions, one on a touchdown drive. You know, And again, we had a chance on a touchdown drive. The ball's in our hands. We're off the field again. We don't make the play. That's the difference between winning and losing. That's what kids have to understand. And not to put it on a kid that drops a ball, that's not what it's about. It's just about understanding the sense of urgency of the situation. I think they're starting to understand it. And particularly Saturday or Thursday, excuse me, I think they really felt like, God, we did so many good things. We were in position. Yeah, maybe a couple breaks didn't go our way. But also there's a couple other plays that, we actually did good things, put ourselves in p position to make a play, and we didn't make the play. And three plays later, they score seven points. You know, and that's you look at 29-24. So, um, 
just keep growing in every area and keep competing harder. I, I feel like we're competing harder every week. I, and again, I don't think it was early in the year kids did not want to compete as much as really understanding how to do it on a consistent basis and the amount of energy it takes to come ready to play and stay the course for 60 minutes. And we still have plenty of dips in there, you know, but I don't think we're having dips in our, our compete level. I think we're having dips in our mental <laughs> compete level that times we, we relax a little bit mentally and it, it, it bogs us down pretty quickly. Just a follow up on that. When you're saying at the beginning of the year, they didn't understand how to compete hard. Is that the older guys or the younger players? I just think in general, everybody, the, the level it takes to win football games, all right? I think they're all willing, old and young are willing. I think definitely the young guys have no idea the difference between high school and college, you know, that there's such a different level of intensity and different level of, of athleticism on the field. So that's – and I just think our older guys physically willing to throw their body around but not totally understanding the mental aspect that comes along with winning. That is just as important as the physical aspect, and that comes from lack of winning. When you're not winning, maybe you've never learned that lesson, and I think they're starting, starting to learn it. And, again, it, things have been so new for us as we go through the process of rebuilding this program of year one, we do a lot of things that kids feel good about, and we, we're pretty competitive. Uh, and we stay in games. Then year two off season, we do even more stuff, and, and kids work even harder and smarter. And along with that, maybe they think it's just going to happen when the season comes. That God, we're doing so much more stuff, and we feel like we're doing better stuff, and we're you know we're doing extra stuff on our own, and whether it be watching tape or kicking and punting or whatever they do on their on their free time that then it comes down to we're practicing better and they feel like in practice they're ready. They know the game plan. They know the opposition game plan. And then they're not getting the results. And part of it is just understanding that Saturday is a different level of everything, you know, and bringing your game to the next level, and particularly us where we're not still the most talented team. We're never favored in any games except for opener. I think we're favored. We haven't been favored since then. So when you say you don't have a margin for error, you got to play and play smart. And I think the physical effort comes quicker. And then the mental effort, we're starting to figure out how important every single snap is. And that's how. And then once you get it, you know, once you get it, it doesn't leave you because you, you start winning. And you understand, like, hey, when we used to not have that mental effort every down, we didn't win. And now we're getting it every down and we're winning. Well, let's keep it going. And it feeds off itself. And we're still, that's part of what we're learning. Learning how to win is hard. Once you learn how to win, keep winning is not very hard. But it's harder to get to that point, And we're still in the process of getting to that point. Anybody else got anything? All right, Coach, I just have one question. Uh, it's Saturday. It's Military Appreciation Day. Um, where a lot of the you know, vets can come back, they get discounted tickets and all of that. I mean, when I say that, what does Military Appreciation Day mean to you? Well, it shouldn't mean the same to everybody in America. Like, we live in the greatest country in the world, and these are the people that protects our, protect our rights and liberties. And uh, my dad's an old Army guy, so it's, it's like some of the other things we talk of. Everybody knows somebody <laughs> uh, probably in their lives that's that's been in the military, and, and I – I make reference to it all the time when kids complain about their plight in life or they're hot, you know. I said, hot is, hot is our army over in Iraq right now and in the desert and it's 150 degrees and they got 60 pounds of equipment on and they're trying not to get hit by a gunshot or a bomb. I said, that's hot. I said, if you asked our army guys are over in Iraq defending our country right now in the desert, if they thought 90 was hot in fall camp, they wouldn't think that's very hot. They think that's pretty pretty balmy day for what they go through on a daily basis. So uh, it, it should mean a lot to everybody. It means a lot to me, uh, and it, it should mean a lot to everybody in this country because we have opportunities here that no one else in the world have, and uh, people always wonder why I'm so optimistic. And uh, we did a nice little thing with the, uh, for cancer a week ago, and then you have military appreciation. And you don't have to look far to gain perspective on how lucky you have it and the opportunities we have. and. We're sitting with the football records not very good, and, well, why aren't you down? Everybody that calls me, hey, how are you hanging in there? I'm like, we're hanging fine. Like, this is, this is a great opportunity. We got a great opportunity against Eastern Michigan. Uh, we had a great opportunity against Buffalo last Thursday. I thought our kids really tried to seize that opportunity and compete and find a way to win a game, and we didn't come – come through now we got another great opportunity this saturday another great week to prepare and get better and keep building this thing and uh so 
with the military being here and hopefully a lot of people will come it'll be be awesome and hopefully i'm sure we're doing something to pay pay our respects to him at some point during the game which i'll probably be in the locker room it's usually at halftime or something so i'll miss it but it, it's an it's an awesome thing to recognize all right i think we're good thanks coach thanks